people began to see uh, uh, much more uh, about perspective and vanishing points. Uh, so uh, you have now, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, around about the 15th century. This is the Holy Trinity by Masachiko. And you can see that the figures are all working towards the vanishing point. Everything here, the perspective, it's all correct. This is the oldest known painting in existence uh, in which the perspective is all correct uh, around about the 15th century, end of the 15th century. Uh, so the first work uh, in, uh, in 3D and perspective was written by uh, Leon Battista Alberti, who wrote a book uh, on how to draw in perspective. Uh, he, he did this by creating a box, and this box had a little peephole, and somewhere inside this box was an imaginary plane and that plane was what he called the picture plane. That was a virtual, uh, a virtual canvas. And so he, uh, he drew on the virtual canvas a straight line representing the horizon line and a vanishing point in the middle of that line. Then from the bottom of the canvas, of the imaginary canvas, he drew a series of lines like this. He then turned the box around and from the side of the box, Imagining that a viewer's eyes would be about there. The bottom of the box had a series of lines going along it. Uh, so on the bottom of the box you had these lines and you had the imaginary picture plane. So from the lines in the bottom of the box, he drew lines to the viewer's eyes through the imaginary picture plane. So these are the lines on the bottom of the box. From these lines, he drew lines to the viewer's eyes here. Every one of these is, is an exact, the same spacing. However, here, notice it's not. The lines at the top are closer together than the lines in the bottom. Uh, so, uh, so in the end, you get something like this. At this point, you can now draw in perspective because if you draw, for example, a diagonal line, you, you can see the diagonal line recedes. So by creating this as a template for perspective drawing, uh, Alberti uh, showed, uh, made a, an easy way of drawing in 3D uh, by following these techniques. This is an actual diagram from the actual book by Alberti, uh, written around about 1450 or so, uh, in which he shows the horizon, the vanishing point, ground plane, and, and so on and there are the lines on the picture plane itself. Uh, another device that Alberti came up with uh, was that, uh, in order to create perspective, was a, a glass, uh, a glass uh, sheet of glass here. The sheet of glass had lines drawn across uh, in, a, in a grid pattern up and down the side to side. By looking through any specific uh, grid square, and then painting what he saw on the other side of that grid square, he could build up the picture square by square by square. And of course, what he was looking at through these squares would have been exactly the correct perspective. So uh, this was a mechanism for drawing in perspective simply by looking uh, at the figures. Uh, this, by the way, is called Leonardo's window, this particular thing. Why Leonardo's window when Alberti designed it? Uh, this is another, uh, this is another uh, version of Leonardo's window. In this particular version, you have a frame and you have string uh, wound on the frame to create, again, these little grid squares. Same principle, except that now the artist has a canvas and every, uh, with, with a similar series of squares. Every square on the canvas corresponds to a square in the grid. So what he observes through any specific grid square, he draws on the corresponding square on the, on the canvas. Uh, this, by the way, uh, uh, this is a page from a book by Albrecht Dürer, who was one of the very early perspective paintings. Uh, the book is called Unterweisung der Messung, and it was published in 1525. 
this book became the standard book for perspective drawing uh, in Germany and Europe for hundreds of years. Uh, and this is obviously a very famous drawing, uh, illustration from the book, showing the use of Leonardo's window to draw the perspective. Other devices uh, later on, around about the uh, 18th century, uh, was uh, the camera obscura. The camera obscura is a device which is a box with a lens in the, in the top. The outside world is captured through the lens and projected onto a canvas here, and the artist simply uh, traces out uh, what he sees on the canvas. Uh, and uh, this is this, uh, the first uh, use, the first mention of the Camera Obscura is mentioned by Giovanni della Porta in his book Natura in Naturalis. And he says, if you cannot paint, you can, by this arrangement, draw with a pencil. This is done by reflecting the image downward onto a drawing board with paper. For a person who is skillful, this is a very easy matter. Now, around about 2003 or 2004, the artist David Hockney uh, publicly stated that a lot of the Renaissance artists uh, and uh, used a camera obscura, and this is, was very, very controversial then. It's still very, very controversial. Uh, but he created quite a furor by saying that classical artists used a camera obscura. <coughs> Uh, this is a camera lucidia. This is, uh, we now are at 1806, patented by William Wollaston in 1806. In the camera, in the camera lucidia, uh, you have an, in, an object that you wish to draw. This object goes through a, a viewer and is projected into the viewer's eyes. The painting, the canvas, also goes through the viewer. So the viewer is looking at both the object he's trying to paint and the canvas. The object he's trying to paint is optically superimposed on the canvas through lenses and prisms inside the sideways. Uh, yet another technique uh, is called trompe uh, d'oeil or fool the eye. Uh, in this technique, a painting is made to look as if there is a 3D scene there. But in this, in this case, the artist doesn't want you to think that it's a painting of a 3D scene. The artist wants you to think that you're actually really looking at something in 3D. So that, for example, the artist wants you to think that you're actually standing underneath a rotunda, underneath a half dome. This is, in fact, all painted on flat. But uh, 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 the way it's painted in the strong toy technique is that when you're standing underneath looking straight up, uh, this is the ceiling of St. Ignazio's Cathedral in Rome, uh, painted uh, in uh, around about uh, 1685 by Andrea Pozzo. Uh, and when you stand underneath and look up, you think you're actually standing underneath a, a real rotunda. Is that arched or flat? Arched a little bit? No, the ceiling is flat. The, arch, flat. The, arch, the arches are also drawn flat. It's, uh, the whole ceiling is flat. So the arches and the rotunda and everything there, it's all, it's all drawn in. Uh, <laughs> Trump d'oil exists to this day. Uh, so we go from the Cathedral of St. Ignacio in Rome to street art in San Diego to Batman and Robin. Uh, this is a modern day Trump d'oil. Again, uh, this person is, it's all drawn in. There's nothing to that. There's no real, real figures there. Uh, and, and this is a very interesting uh, example of Trump d'oil. If you look at this figure from this angle, you see a woman with a leg up in the air. That also is a drawing. It's not a real, this is not a photograph. However, if you were to stand here, where these people are standing, on the other side of this pool, you would see this. <laughs> so, this is Trump d'oil in, in, in today's world. No pool at all? There's no pool? Sorry? No pool. No pool. There's no pool. There's pool. Oh, it's it's one, one In fact, the person, the person dipping his leg into the pool is also a drawing. So it's, you can stand in one place to see it. Right. Yeah. Can you go back? Yeah, I did. Yes. If you stand 
Yeah. They always draw it from a particular perspective. It actually the beer bottle, is everything. It's facing yeah, right cool. along the street. Yeah. So if yeah, you go, go back. Where is that? Up. Is that temporary or is that still there? That's not still there. This is street art. Chalk. They, they do this in chalk. chalk. And they have okay. a big festival every year downtown in Little Italy where yeah, they there come was, and they paint yes, all these street chalk things. Was this recent? Art splash. Yeah. yeah. Did you this, see this any is, of those things there? You see Trump Joy there, yeah. If you, you if you go to, I don't know when, I think it's in August, the one in San Diego, there's oh, one in Los Angeles, uh, there's one, one in Seattle. Back, Every yeah. major city has. And most of the art is oh, not is flat, simply yeah. straightforward art, but occasionally you see yeah, techniques like this being used. <laughs> and on this one, even the, the sidewalk being broken there, that's part of the painting. There is no hole there, they painted that whole hole. The man who's crouching is real. No, that's that's no. the artist that's crouching on, and the, the stand, the thing he's standing on, is part of the picture. And he's real. He's real. And it's all flat. Right? Yes. And it's oh. all a flat street. And the, the street we see down in the lower left is just it's part of the drawing. It's part of the drawing. Oh, okay. amazing. So in this case, like in the trombone, wow. the artist doesn't want you to think that you're looking at a prospective painting. He wants yes. you to think you really are. Yeah. 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 So above a 